This is the video for Lesson 4-5, Finding Rules of Exponents. You should have first completed the table and the four draw conclusion questions on the worksheet before playing this video. So if you haven't completed that side of the worksheet, please stop the video, complete it, and then press play again. Okay, so in this chart, we're given an expression. We write the expression out as a repeated multiplication. We're going to count the number of factors and then write it as a power. So 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 3rd is already done for you. We had 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and then 2 times 2 times 2. There's 7 2's all together, so that would be 2 to the 7th. Here we have 1 3, 4 3's, so all together we have 5 3's. And if we wrote this as a power, it would be 3 to the 5th. Here we have two fives, and then four fives. All together, there's six. So if we wrote it as a power, it would be five to the sixth power. Okay, in our second chart, we have fractions. Notice the same base, though. Okay, we wrote it out as repeated multiplication on your paper. It should have been crossed off for you, so I'll go through and do that now. Okay, we cross off our common factors. What's left is five twos up in the numerator, so we wrote it out two times two times two times two times two. There's five of them, and the power would be two to the fifth. So this one here would be three times three times three times three times three over three times three times three. Cross off your common ones, which means all the threes in our denominator disappear, and we are left with three times three. That would mean that there are two factors, and our product as a power would be three squared. Okay, we have five times five times five times five times five times five times five, seven of them, and then six more fives in the denominator. We're going to go through, cancel them out one pair at a time. We're left with just five. That would be one factor. And if we had to write it as a power, it would be five to the first. Okay, so hopefully we filled out the chart correctly. And then it asks you to draw some conclusions. So number one, in the products table, how are the exponents in the first and last columns related? Well, if I go back up to the top here, I had a 4 and a 3, and then our answer had a power of 7. I had a 1 and a 4, our answer had a power of 5, and then I had a 2 and a 4, and our answer had a power of 6. So, we should have seen that if we add the two exponents together, then we get our answer. So let's use our answer to the first question to write the product of 10 to the 7th times 10 to the 4th as a power. Well, since we're multiplying, we're going to add our two exponents together, and it would be 10 to the 11th power. In the quotients table, how are the exponents in the first and last columns related? I'm going to scroll back up. Here I had an 8 over a 3. My answer was 5. Here I had a 5 over 3, the exponent, and my answer was 2. I had a 7 over 6, and the answer had a 1 as an exponent. So if we subtract our two exponents when we're dividing, we get the exponent in our answer. Okay, so let's use that idea to answer number 4. Use your answer to question 3 to write the quotient 6 to the 9th over 6 to the 7th as a power. Well, since we're dividing, we have the same base, we can subtract our exponents, and 9 minus 7 is 2. Notice it doesn't tell you to evaluate what that is, you're just writing the answer with one exponent. Okay, that's the general idea of this lesson. So let's just take a couple notes. Flip over your paper. So here we have the product of powers property. It's kind of hard to say, it's like a tongue twister. 
In words, to multiply powers with the same base, add their exponents. So an example with numbers would be if I said, I don't know, 4 to the third power times 4 to the second power. The 4 is the base, so we have the same base, which means I can add my two exponents together and get 4 to the fifth. If I want to use algebra, let's say a to the m, we're going to multiply a to the n. Notice my base is the same, it's a. Well, then I can have that base a and add my exponents together. Now, the m and n are not like terms, so we're just going to write it as m plus n. So example one, using the product of powers property. Lake Powell, the reservoir between behind the Glen Canyon Dam in Arizona, can hold about 10 to the 12th cubic feet of water when full. There are about 10 to the 27th water molecules in one cubic foot of water. About how many water molecules can the reservoir hold? Well, the answer to this question is going to be to multiply 10 to the 12th times 10 to the 27th to figure out how many water mo molecules are in all those cubic feet of water. And we have the same base of 10, which means we are allowed to add our two exponents together. So we're going to keep the same base of 10, add our 12 and our 27, and we get 10 to the 39. So it's 10 to the 39 molecules of water. Okay, let's see how you do. Try numbers 1, 2, and 3. Pause the video, and when you're ready to see how you did, press play again. Okay, for number one, our base is two. Okay, so that's going to be our base and our answer. We just add our exponents together. Three plus two is five. So our answer is two to the fifth. In number two, we only see an exponent on one of our numbers. However, we can always remember that there's an invisible one on any number as an exponent. So 5 to the first times 5 squared, our base is going to stay the same, and we add our two exponents together, and our answer is 5 to the third. In number 3, we have four different, sorry, we have three different numbers. However, they all have the same base of 4. So our base is going to be 4, and we're just going to add our 6, our 4, and our 3. And that's going to give you 13. So 4 to the 13th power. Example 2, using the product of powers property. This is a slightly different example because we have our bases, which are x. However, we also have coefficients in this problem. When you have coefficients as well as a power, we're going to multiply our two coefficients together and then deal with the powers. So you can do 3 times 5 to get 15. And then we have x times x to the fifth. Remember, this is really x to the first. So our base is x. Our exponents are 1 and 5. We add them together to get 6. So our answer is 15x to the sixth. Okay, quotient of powers property. To divide powers with the same base, subtract the exponent of the denominator from the exponent of the numerator. So, for example, if I said 6 to the 8th over 6 to the 5th, okay, since it's division, we're going to subtract 8 minus 5 to get 6 to the 3rd. In algebra, we're going to use the same letters as before. We'll say a to the m over a to the n. Our base is a, and we're going to subtract them. So, m minus n. So example three, let's try two fractions here and see how we do. Okay, seven to the sixth over seven squared. Our base is seven, and we're going to subtract our exponent. Six minus two is four. That's our answer. For letter B, okay, we have x to the eight over x squared. Now we have had, we've seen similar problems like this before, okay? And we've prime factored it out. So, you know what? Let's do that first. We'll say 
2 times 2 times x times x times x. And we'll keep going until there's 8 of them. I think that's good. And then we had 2 times 5 times x times x. So we did this type of problem, then we would cross out our common factors, so we cross off some 2's, cross off some x's, and then we have to see what's left. So we have 2, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2x to the 6 over 5. That's how we simplified it before. Another way we could do it is using this quotient of powers property. So what you can do is you can simplify the numbers that are there. 4 over 10. Both of those numbers are divisible by 2. So we can say let's divide out that 2. We're going to have 2 fifths, which happens to be the same numbers we get if we prime factored. Okay, so we took care of the numbers. Let's take care of the variables, and we can use our powers property. We have x to the eighth over x squared. Okay, when we subtract our exponents, we get 6. And we're always going to stick it up on top, so x to the sixth power. So we still get the same answer as we did before, but now you just have a different strategy to simplify it. Our last example, okay, we're using both properties. You'll see we have some multiplication in our numerator, and then we have a fraction bar, which also means that we're going to be doing some dividing also. Okay, and we're just going to do it in two separate pieces. So over here, we're just going to look at 3m to the 5th times m squared. Okay, if it helps you, you can put in that invisible 1 that's in front of m squared to remember that 1's the coefficient, but you don't have to. So we have 3 times 1, that gives us 3. And our base is m. We have m to the 5th, m squared. Add our exponents, because right now we're just doing the multiplication. And we get 3m to the 7th. Okay, however, we still have that 6m to the 3rd. And now we have to simplify this. Well, let's look at the numbers. We can divide a 3 out from both of them. So we get 1 over 2. And then we have m to the 7th over m to the 3rd. Since it's a division, we subtract our exponents. So 7 minus 3 is 4. And we're going to stick that up on top. We always stick it in the numerator. And I think this just looks a teeny bit funny. So we're just going to take out that 1 because we don't really need to write coefficients of 1. So we're going to say m to the 4th over 2. Okay, if you have any questions on anything, please make sure you write them down so you can ask tomorrow in class. Okay, and if you want to get a head start on practicing, you can always look at the e-workbook on the website.